Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to speak uh, to the Pan-African Technology Foundation's West Africa Boot Camp and thank the organizers for the invitation. Uh, the theme, Digital Transformation and Adoption of Emerging Technologies in West Africa is of interest to the internet technical community I am part of, who believe that a good, stable, secure, internet in Africa is a precondition to the digital transformation we seek. I'm glad that Part F has brought many of you here to join hands in that transformation, which invariably ought to come from within Africa to be enduring. The internet technical institutions, some of which you mentioned called AF Star, founded over the decades will be beneficial or important technical infrastructure for digital transformation. And these include the Numbers Registry Afrinic, the Network Operator Group you referred to, the uh, consortium of uh, top-level domains, the registries in Africa, the Research and Education Network, Afrin, the Emergency and Response Teams, Africa Set the registrars, AF registrar, and Dot Africa, which is an AUC-sponsored top-level domain, Dot Africa, would be very, very important technical infrastructure for the transformation. As a computer scientist, engineer, I find the interest of this community on blockchain, AI, and entrepreneurship welcoming. Having been a uh, first PhD in computer science in the region in 1977, I've witnessed the technology divide and the liberation struggle to attain technology independence for Africa. I've seen this in numerous ways in academia, industry, and policy realms. This spans the 80s when the numbers of computers were countable in digits and the total number of telephone lines were in thousands and therefore, we should be grateful for what we have now. At the time we introduced commercial internet service in Ghana in 94, there were only few thousands of PCs and mere hundreds of thousands of telephone lines in Ghana. The internet came to Ghana with 9.6 kilobits per second international bandwidth at exorbitant monthly cost of 7,500 dollars a month to Ghana Telecom, and on the second half circuit, 5,000 pounds plus VAT to British Telecom. We did this with only Ghanaian engineers and determination for self-reliance in technology. How entrepreneurial was that in 1994? We should, in some sense, put our money where our mouth is, so to speak. This marked the beginning of the techno liberation struggle to free Africa of foreign technology domination. This spirit swept through the continent, and by 2000, the last country, Somalia, had connectivity at its capital city. We insisted Africa must be part of the supply and not, not only consume technology. That struggle still continues today, work in progress. The technology divide has been unimaginable, yet we were always courageous and made do with what we had and repeatedly surprising ourselves with useful contributions in spite of our limited capacities. We certainly have come a long way since the 70s with only a handful of computers in use and a small analog network, telephone network. We went through a phase in the 80s building network enterprise systems for companies and in the 90s, with arrival of PCs, the conditions were ripe for internet, and we moved into cyberspace in the 90s and been growing since. Here are suggestions of directions we should be going and include suggestions to this community. I'll maintain a narrow focus on needs of the science and technology community. Reading from the bootcamp materials, the community's interests are in the intelligences. By that, we borrow the perspective in data intelligence, 
using trying to understand, uh, using data to understand what is happening and in, in decisions, artificial intelligence, machines learning from observations and data, how to do the things you want them to do, crowd intelligence, obtaining knowledge from other people and pulling it together as better knowledge than yours, embodied intelligence, capturing the internet of things, the autonomous systems, the robots, and money intelligence you know, encompassing the blockchain, the, you know, uh, the ledger technologies and the graphs and what have you. All these are emanating from computer sciences, from computing sciences. These can be highly technical areas that demand very strong educational background and commitment that many may not see. The lack of critical mass of such people deepens the divide. Going from digital divide to economic divide to intelligence divide if care is not taken. How are we to manage issues of data justice when we ourselves do not collect much data? If we further imagine state of computer to brain interconnect in overseas research groups, it won't be long before we are confronted with a new divide where these intelligences are combined with human advantages. Where would Africa be? Hence, the weak support for computer science and IT departments at tertiary institutions in our countries is problematic, as these are expected to be the driving to be driving local technology advances and producing workforce for the digital economy. This requires intentional investment on part of nation states. Also disturbing is the idea some have that one can become good through self-study using the internet, internet and tools in replacement of formal education. Assuming that is the case, what if one had education and also had access to the same internet tools? they would be more effective, I imagine. The parks, centers, hubs, etc., we are fond of, which make showcases work only when you have strong computer science and IT educational system in, to support. The parks and centers will be empty without these uh, support systems. <laughs> Professionals, e.g. lawyers, doctors, engineers are trained. Hence, I wonder why one would imagine Computer professionals without formal training, no shortcuts, have to run faster. We ought not to confuse skills with education. Our skill can make you do things with tools, but the education will make you make new tools. I want Africa to make new tools addressing its own needs. Unless one is a genius and I'm not, you will need formal training. So don't listen to get rich quick sales pitch around each of the five intelligences aim higher than being a good user. And that takes education and hard work. Computer science is a science of programming. I take it seriously and I know it may not be for everyone. Of course, I write programs routinely at 72, just like any other professional at my age practicing their trade. I wish same for you when you reach this age for the sake of Africa's technology industry. Be aware that technologies are intensifying, requiring more educational background to cope with the pace. The acronym ICT itself, okay, creates, that is used in development planning by governments, dilutes the technology component unfairly. It mixes two categories of uses, technology, such as media and telecommunications. With the new yet to self-evolve component that you belong to, the technology uh, not uh, well emphasized. We end up with not a good appreciation without the main piece technology having critical mass. Meanwhile, both media and telecommunications are well established with professional bodies and chambers in many parts of our region. You also face the problem of procurement versus development tension that's like a sprint versus long distance, which exists as one can procure technology from global sources to use in provision of services today. And no one can, and, and all one can in capacity set technology also can invest in this local and create supplies long term. What makes of dependence is to 
plan is in a public policy is the challenge. We have to balance the short-term and long-term development objectives of the digital economy. In the 90s, there were hundreds of local ISPs. However, today, internet is provided by a handful of telecommunications companies. What did we do wrong to create this monopoly-style market consolidation in hands of a few multinationals? Was this a result of over-prioritizing fundraising in policy that gave the sector away? With the current wave around money intelligence, blockchain, DEFI, smart contracts, we need to ask ourselves, how will our African blockchain crypto industry look like in future? Would we end up with the same fate as the internet that enabled blockchain? Are we going to be the be, be only users of wallets or marketing wings of international corporations? Or are we going to be local developers and suppliers of blockchain services to our needs? It is important to maintain the techno liberation spirit and not yield to market capture. And recently, several governments in this region have embarked on central bank digital currency projects. We applaud the government's engagement with this technology and encourage that implementation remain truly decentralized to benefit from decentralized finance. Now that we have multiple central bank digital currency implementations in the sub-region, we should advocate for open interoperable CDB standards for developers to build regional trade finance applications. The AFCFTA powered regional economy will depend on the internet and blockchain, which we don't have enough of yet. Hence any impedance, whether taxes, shutdown or tampering would be costly. The AFCFTA will do well when there are lots of companies and government websites engaged in online trade. These commerce-powered websites require tools from the internet and also cryptocurrencies may be a big part of the venture. In reading about AFC FTA, I learned that Africa loses billions from intra-regional trading in dollars. One forward-looking proposal <clears throat> is to consider taking advantage of advances in cryptocurrencies and blockchain and issue an African Union coin to fund Africa Agenda 2063. And we trade only in African Union coin among ourselves, while the AU coin may be traded on exchanges for additional value. If you wish to know more about what I am doing, come visit Ghana.com or fatherofinternet.africa can find me on most social media platforms. I hope to see some of you at the Ghana Blockchain Conference.org occurring in on the 6th to 7th of October. I wish you well with this technology and thank you very much for your attention.